actually take our formula for compounded interest and modify it slightly for a general compounded growth. The formula would look something like this. Capital Q of lowercase t equals lowercase a times left parentheses, one plus, and then a fraction, lowercase r over lowercase n, close the parentheses, and then raise that to the n times t power. In this case, a is the initial value. In our compound interest formula, that was the principal. r is the growth rate. N is the number of compoundings per time, T is the time, and that capital Q just stands for quantity at time T. Now we can take this formula and do a little bit of rewriting with exponent rules to write it as lowercase a times left parentheses, left parentheses, and then one plus a fraction, lowercase r over lowercase n, close the parentheses, raise that to the nth power, close the parentheses, raise that to the t power. All we've really done is move the t and the exponent to the very outside. This expression in parentheses, 1 plus r over n, close the parentheses, to the n power, it has an interesting behavior when r equals 1 and n approaches infinity. Let's do a quick calculation in a table of what 1 plus the fraction 1 over n all raised to the nth power comes out to be when n is 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. When n is 100 and we evaluate this expression, the result is 2.70481. When n is 1,000 and we evaluate the expression, the result is 2.71692. When n is 10,000 and we evaluate the expression, the result is 2.71815. And when n is 100,000 and we evaluate the expression, the result is 2.71827. You can see that we have stabilization to three decimal places when we get to 10,000 and 100,000. In fact, this result is what we call Euler's number. And if we continue to do this, if we continue to find more and more decimal places of stabilization, in other words, we let n approach infinity, we get what we call the number e, that's a lowercase e. Euler's number. It's 2.71828 dot dot dot. It doesn't round nicely. It's considered a transcendental number. That's a number that doesn't repeat and is not predictable. Euler's number, or what we call the base for continuous exponential growth, that letter E, allows us to rewrite our expression for multiple compoundings of growth as an expression for a continuous growth. In other words, compounding as often as you possibly can until you run into that limit that happens in growth. So we take the original formula we talked about, Q of T equals lowercase a times left paren, one plus the fraction R over N, close the parentheses, raise that to the NT. We rewrite it so that the one plus R over N in parentheses to the N is sitting inside another set of parentheses to the t. The a is still to the left on the outside. And then we just replace this 1 plus r over n raised to the nth power with e to the k. That's lowercase e to the lowercase k. So that's still sitting inside of parentheses and raised to the t power. The result of this is lowercase a times lowercase e raised to the lowercase k times t. Now we have two growth rates in this equation above. We have the lowercase r, that's the annual growth rate with compoundings or annually. And then we have lowercase k, that's the continuous growth rate. And those are not the same number. So our continuous exponential function to summarize, we have capital Q of t equals lowercase a times lowercase e to the lowercase k times lowercase t power. Lowercase a is the initial amount. Lowercase k is the continuous growth or decay rate. Lowercase t is the time, and capital Q is the quantity at time t. Let's see if you can use this formula. We're going back to a banking problem. Celia deposits $10,000 into a bank account, paying 2.125% interest, compounded continuously. How much will be in the bank account after five years? Use that continuous exponential function and see if you can figure it out. Pause the video, come back when you're finished. Okay, let's see how you did. Let's go ahead and write out our lowercase a, lowercase k, lowercase t, and capital Q. What do we know? 
And what do we need to find in this problem? Well, Celia deposits $10,000. So that would be the initial value, the A value in this problem. K is the continuous growth rate. And we know that that's 2.125% compounded continuously. So that's a K value of 0 0.02125. Remember, we write these rates as decimals. And then the T is five years. We want to know how much is in the account after five years. And capital Q is what we're trying to find. So Q equals 10,000 times E. And then that's raised to the 0 0.02125 times five power, which results in 11,120 0.998, or rounding, let's say $11,121. Now, if you forget to convert that K value of 2.125% to a decimal, I want to show you what the result is. I'm going to put this in red so you don't think this is the answer, but it would be 10,000 times E to the 2.125 times 5. And that comes out to be 411,508,557. Now, please look at your answers and think to yourself, does this make any sense? If you put $10,000 into a bank account paying 2% interest, do you really think you're gonna have $411 million after five years? Because I'm pretty sure if that was the case, everybody would take their student loan payout put it in the bank and sit on it for five years to have that $411 million. So this cannot possibly make any sense. When you get results like this, please make sure that you think about what errors you might have made in the problem. It's a very common error to forget to convert the percent and it results in some pretty wacky numbers.